Chapter 2. A Money-Making Machine During my first few days of talking with Anastasia, I saw her as a recluse with her own unique way of looking at the world. Now, after all that I have heard and read about her, after all her subsequent penetrations into our lives, she has become a kind of anomaly. My head has started to swirl in confusion. It is with great effort that I am trying to let go of the incoming tide of information and conclusions and get back to the simplicity of my first impressions. And to answer the oft-repeated question, why didn't you bring Anastasia out of the taiga? I wanted very much to bring Anastasia out of the taiga, but I realized it couldn't be done by force. I needed to try and show her how useful and appropriate her stay in our society would be. I reflected on which of her abilities could be used by people, and my business in particular, with benefit accruing to her as well. And suddenly I realized something. This Anastasia standing before me would be a real money-making machine. For one thing, she is easily capable of healing people from any disease. And she does this without making any kind of diagnosis, but simply chasing out of the body any pains and sores that have invaded it. And she doesn't even have to touch the body. I experience this for myself. She becomes utterly concentrated, looking out with her kind, unblinking, bluish-gray eyes. And the body seems to warm up from her look. And even, even one's feet begin to perspire. All sorts of toxins escape through the perspiration. People pay big money for medicines and operations. If one doctor can't help, they go to another or go to psychics or bioenergy therapists just to get cured of a single disease, sometimes spending weeks or months or even years in their search for a cure, while Anastasia's method takes but a few minutes. I calculated that if she spends even 15 minutes on one patient and charges just 250,000 rubles for that, although many healers charge a good deal more, that would make one million rubles an hour. But that's by no means the limit. Operations, for example, can cost up to 30 million rubles. It seemed as though a sound business plan was taking shape in my head. I decided to work out some details and asked Anastasia, So that means you could rid a person's body of any and all ills? Yes, replied Anastasia. I think I could eliminate any and all. How much time do you need to spend on a single patient? Sometimes quite a lot. A lot? That's how long? Once it took me more than ten minutes. Ten minutes? That's nothing. Some people take years to get better. Ten minutes is a long time, considering the fact that I have to concentrate, as it were, and decrease my sense of conscious awareness. That's not a problem. Conscious awareness can wait. You know, you know so much as it is. I've thought of something, Anastasia. What have you thought of? I'll take you with me. In a big city, we'll hire a decent office for you. I'll advertise, and you can treat people. You'll be of a, good, of a great help to all sorts of people, and we'll have a right good income. But I sometimes treat people right now as it is, when I visualize various situations with the Dotchniks to help them understand the world of plants around them. My ray also eliminates their diseases. Only, I try not to eliminate all diseases. But they don't even know that you're the one that's doing it. They don't pay you any money for it, or even say thank you. You don't get anything for your labors. I do. What? I feel happy. Well, that's fine then. You can be happy and delighted, and all the business will have an income as well. But what if somebody does not have any money to pay for treatment? She inquired. Now why are you jumping into trifling matters like that? You don't have to think about that. You'll have secretaries and an administrator. All you need to think about is treating people, perfecting yourself, and attending seminars to share your experience and exchange ideas with other healers. Do you know yourself how your method works, your ray, and what the underlying principle is? Yes, I know. And this method is known in your world too? Doctors and career scientists know about it, or at least they feel its beneficial effect. In hospitals, they try to talk with their patients cheerfully so as to uplift their spirits. Doctors have long noticed that if someone is in a state of depression, it is difficult to cure their disease, and medicines do not help. 
Well, if you treat a patient with love, the disease will go away more quickly. So why has nobody tried learning this method and developing it to the degree you have? Many scientists are trying to learn it, and many people you call folk healers also use this method, and they are having some success. This is the same method Jesus Christ Jesus healed by, as well as the saints. Much is said about love in the Bible, because this feeling has a beneficial influence on man. It is the strongest feeling of all. Why do healers and doctors have so little success, and you have so much? Because they live in your world, and they, just like every, everyone else in that world, have taken in harmful feelings. What kind of harmful feelings? And what do they have to do with it? Harmful feelings, Vladimir, are anger, hatred, irritation, jealousy, envy, and others. They, and other similar feelings, make man weaker. You mean to say, Anastasia, that you hardly ever get angry? I never get angry. All right, Anastasia. It's not important how this effect comes about. It's the final result that's important. And what benefit can be derived from it? Tell me, would you agree to go with me and get involved in treating people? Vladimir, you see, my home is here. This is my motherland, the place where I belong. It is only by staying here that I can fulfill my purpose. Nothing gives man greater strength than his motherland, the space of love created by his parents. Treating people, delivering them from physical ailments, I can do that right here from a distance, with the help of my ray. Well, all right. If you don't want to travel, you can do your treating from a distance. You and I can set up an arrangement as to where those wishing treatment can come. They will pay their money, and you will heal them at a specific time. We will draw up a schedule. Would you agree to that? Vladimir, I know you want to make a lot of money. You shall have it. I shall help you. Only that is not the way to do it. In your world, people charge for treatment. There is no other way in your world. But I would rather do it that without any question of money. Besides, I cannot treat everybody indiscriminately, since I have not fully realized in which cases healing will be helpful and which ones harmful. But I shall try to become aware of this and understand. And as soon as I can decipher... What drivel is that? I broke in. How can healing or treating a person be harmful? Or do you mean harmful to yourself? Healing of physical ailments can often bring harm to the one healed. It seems, Anastasia, your sophistications have given you a somewhat inverted concept of good and evil. Doctors have always been held in high regard by society, even though they have not performed their services free of charge. And since you cite the Bible so much, you'll find that it is not forbidden even there. So cast those doubts out of your head. Curing someone is always a good thing. You see, Vladimir, I know this from experience. My grandfather showed me an example of the harm that healing can bring when it is not thought through, when the patient himself does not participate in the healing. What kind of strange philosophy you have here? I offer you a joint business venture. What have such examples got to do with it? Chapter 3. Healing for Hell One day I saw with my ray a lonely old woman working on her garden plot. Anastasia began. She was sprightly, slim, and always cheerful. She caught my interest right away. She had a very small plot and a lot of different things growing in it, and they grew very well because she tended them with love. Then I learned that the old woman would put everything she grew into a basket and take it into town and sell it. She tried not to eat the early fruits of her labors, but sell them when they would still fetch a high price. She needed the money to help her son. She had given birth to him late in life, and soon afterward, afterward she was left without a husband. Her relatives never communicated with her. Her son liked to draw as a child, and she had dreams that he would become an artist. Several times he tried to get in some place where he could pursue his studies. Finally he made it. And once or twice a year he would come to visit his elderly mother. These visits were the highlight of her life, and each time she would save up her money and prepare a whole supply of food for him. As the time for his visit approached, she would pack the vegetables into glass jars, put their lids on tight, and give the whole supply to him when he arrived. She loved him very much, and kept dreaming about her son becoming a top-notch artist. 
She lived on that dream. The woman was kind and cheerful. Then, for a while, I did not watch her. The next time I saw her, she was very ill. She had a hard time bending over to work on her plantings. Each time she bent over, a sharp pain ran through her body. But she proved to be very resourceful. She made her beds long and narrow. Each, each time she went out to her plots, she would take with her the seat from an old stool, minus the legs, and use it to sit on while she did her weeding. And that way she was able to move around the whole plot without having to bend over. She dragged the basket along on a string, and she was looking forward to a good harvest. It really looked as though the harvest that year would be quite plent plentiful, since the plants felt her state of mind and reacted accordingly. The woman sensed that she would soon pass on, and to make things easier for her son before she died, she bought a coffin and a wreath and made all the funeral preparations. But still, she wanted to bring in one last harvest and prepare the winter's food supply for her son before she died. I did not pay much attention then to why she was still sick, even after such close contact with the plants. I thought perhaps it was because she herself ate almost nothing from her plot. She sold what she grew, and then used the money to buy things she needed on the cheap. I decided to help her, and one night when she lay down to sleep I began warming her with my ray, removing the pains from her body. I could feel some kind of resistance to the, to the ray, but I still kept on trying. I did this for about ten minutes until I succeeded in healing her f flesh. Then. When Grandfather came, I told him about the old woman, and I asked him why the ray had met some resistance. He thought about it, and then told me I had done the wrong thing. It made me very distraught. I began asking Grandfather to explain why. At first he did not say a word. Then he said, You healed the body. I was amazed. What harm could you have possibly brought to the woman's soul? I asked. Anastasia sighed and went on. The woman's health got better, and she did not die. Her son came to see her earlier than usual. This time he came only for two days and told his mother he had quit his studies and did not want to be an artist any more. He was now involved in some other work that brought in some more money. He had got married. Now he would have a lot of money, and he no longer wanted her to prepare those insipid food jars for him, since transporting them would now cost more. "'You can eat better yourself now, mother,' he said. "'He left without taking anything. "'That morning the woman sat on her porch, looked at her plot, "'and her eyes were filled with such emptiness and depression. "'They looked as though she did not want to live. "'You see, her body was healthy, but it was as if there was no life left in it. "'I saw, or rather felt, the terrible emptiness and hopelessness in her heart. "'If I had not cured her body, the woman would have died at the right time.' She would have died peacefully with her beautiful dream and hope intact. Now here she was, still alive, but in great despair. And this was many times more frightening than physical death. Two weeks later she passed on. Chapter 4. A Confidential Conversation I realized, Anastasia continued, that physical disease is nothing compared with mental torments. But at the time, I was not yet able to treat the soul. I wanted to know how I could do this, or even if I could do it at all. Now I know. It is possible. And I found out something else. That physical diseases appear in man, not just as a result of his self-withdrawal from nature around him, and not just as a result of the dark feelings which he allows himself to take in, they, the diseases, can also be a means of warding off or even deliverance from considerably greater torments. Diseases are one of the devices or means of communication between the supreme intelligence, God, and man. Man's pain is his pain, too. But it could not be otherwise. How else could you get the message, for example? Do not keep throwing into your stomach all sorts of harmful stuff. You tend not to listen to words of reason, after all. That's why the message comes through pain. But instead, you swallow painkillers and go back to stubbornly doing your own thing. So, I countered, it follows then, in your opinion, that there's no need to treat people at all, no need to help them with their ailments. Help there should be, 
but first of all to gain a proper understanding of the origins of the disease. Man needs help in discerning what the Supreme Intelligence, God, desires to say to him. But that is a most difficult task. One can make mistakes. Pain, after all, is a confidential conversation between two beings who know about each other. Interference from a third party often harms man instead of helping him. Well, why then did you rid me of my diseases? I asked Anastasia. Does that mean you've harmed me in some way? All your diseases will come back to you if you do not change your lifestyle, your attitude to things around you, and to yourself. If you do not change some of your habits, they are the causes of your diseases. I have done no harm to your soul. It became clear to me that it would be impossible to persuade Anastasia to make money out of using her healing abilities until she had sorted things out for herself. My business plan had fallen apart. Anastasia must have noticed my irritation, for she said, Do not be upset, Vladimir. I shall try to grasp everything as quickly as possible. And now, if you really want to help others and yourself and not just make money, I shall tell you about the means by which man can cure himself from any from many diseases without undesirable side effects, as might happen when outsiders try to interfere in his destiny. If indeed you want to listen to this. What choice do I have? I'm not going to change your mind in any case. Tell me. There are several main causes underlying the diseases of the human flesh, namely harmful feelings, emotions, an artificial dietary regime, an unnatural meal schedule, and food composition the lack of short-term and long-term goals, and a misapprehension of one's essence and purpose in life. Positive emotions, a variety of plants, and a reappraisal of one's essence and purpose in life. All these are capable not only of counteracting diseases, but also of significantly enhancing one's physical and mental or emotional state. As far as bringing back, under the conditions of your world, Man's lost connection with plants, I have already told you about that. After man has established a direct personal contract, contact with these plants, it is much easier to make sense of everything else. The ray of love, too, is capable of curing many diseases, of one's fellow man, and even prolonging his life by creating around him a space of love. But man himself, once he has managed to arouse positive emotions in himself, can use them to extinguish pain and cure the flesh, the diseases of the flesh, even the effects of poison. What does that mean, arousing positive emotions? I queried. How can one think good thoughts if one has a toothache or a stomach ache? Pure, clean, clear moments of life, positive emotions like guardian angels will overcome pain and disease. But what if someone doesn't have enough pure and clear moments to arouse the positive healing emotions? What should he do then? He should create at once something to make them appear. They appear when people around you treat you with genuine love. So you must create a situation along those lines. Create it by your actions and respect to those around you. Otherwise, your guardian angel will not be able to help you. I wonder whether I have ever had them myself, and if so, how strong they were. How does one call them forth? This can be done through reminiscing. For example, let us recall something good, something pleasant from your past. With the help of that image, try to feel the soft and pleasing state of mind you shall ex you experienced back then. Do you want to try it now? I shall help you. Try it. All right, let's give it a try. Please lie down on the grass and relax. You can remember starting from this point in your life right now and going back into the past. Or you can start with your childhood and proceed up to the present day. Or you can jump at once to the most pleasant moments and feel the sensations connected with them. I lay down in the grass. Anastasia lay down beside me and pressed her fingers against mine. I thought her proximity might prevent me from concentrating on my reminiscences. And I said, perhaps I'd better be alone. I shall be very quiet. When you start remembering, you will forget about me, and you will not feel the touch of my hand. But I can help you remember everything more quickly and vividly. 